What's up everyone? You are Tapesh Kumar here. And have you ever entered a cockpit and wondered ki yaar ye itne sare switches kyun hai is cockpit mein? Itne sare controls, itne sare buttons, itne sare toggle switches. In sab se hota kya hai? What do these pilots do with these switches? Well, tension not. Aaj I'm going to tell you guys each and everything about the cockpit. What all the switches are meant for, what are their placements, what are all the controls meant for and how do we actually operate the aircraft from the cockpit? So let's get started. So the aircraft that I'm going to use for today's video is a Boeing 737. As you all know how much I love the 737. So I thought why not tell you guys ki 737 ki cockpit mein kya kya hota hai. In case you guys want to see some other cockpit and want a tour of that cockpit, do let me know drop it in the comments whichever aircraft you want to see. प्लीज कोई नॉर्मल सा जहाज बताना ये एंटनाव वैंटनाव का मेरे को ज़्यादा पता नहीं है बट यू कैन आस्क मी एनीथिंग अबाउट द एयरबस और द बोइंग एयरक्राफ्ट आई एड बी एबल टू टेल यू सो विदाउट एनी फर्दर अ डू लेट्स डाइव इन टू द कॉकपिट ऑफ अ बोइंग 737। सो दिस इज अ 360 डिग्री कॉकपिट फोटोग्राफ ऑफ द सेवन थ्री सेवन आई विल ड्रॉप द लिंक टू दिस इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन यू कैन गो चेक इट आउट एंड यू कैन एक्चुअली सी द होल कॉकपिट इन थ्री सिक्सटी डिग्रीज लाइक आई एम गो शो यू नाउ सो एज यू कैन सी द होल इमेज हैज द इंटायर कॉकपिट फुल्ली देर सो यू गैस कैन जस्ट ओपन द लिंक ऑन ऑन योर फोन और ऑन योर कंप्यूटर एंड यू कैन हैव अ एक्चुअल थ्री सिक्सटी डिग्री टूर ऑफ द कॉकपिट But the thing is, you should also know कि यहाँ पर ये जो इतने सारे स्विचेज दिख रहे हैं इन सब स्विचेज का मतलब क्या है और इनका काम क्या है सो लेट्स फर्स्ट गेट स्टार्टेड विद द फ्रंट ऑफ द एयरक्राफ्ट सो एज यू कैन सी हियर इन द फ्रंट वी हैव सिक्स डिस्प्लेस द टू आउटर मोस्ट डिस्प्लेस आर नोन एज द प्राइमरी फ्लाइट डिस्प्लेस द प्राइमरी फ्लाइट डिस्प्लेस आर बेसिकली देयर टू टेल यू ऑल द इन्फॉर्मेशन यू रिक्वायर टू फ्लाई द एयरक्राफ्ट सच एज योर हेडिंग योर एल्टीट्यूड योर वर्टिकल स्पीड your current speed of the aircraft your current pitch attitude of the aircraft and your automation status the inside two screens are called navigation displays these displays have data for all the navigation requirements so in order to go from a to b which direction you should fly in what are the coming waypoints what are the time to those waypoints what altitudes are supposed to maintain at those waypoints and it also shows you terrain it shows you weather information so basically all the information you require for navigation is shown on the navigation displays the middle two screens are for your engine information so the boeing 737 is a slightly conventional aircraft these two screens here in the middle they only show you data that you require for engines they do not show you system data some modern airplanes such as the airbus a320 or a lot of other modern aircrafts they show you system status also on these pages as in like what are the different systems doing right now but the boeing 737 does not have that feature so the two displays are mostly used for engine information so as you can see here you have right now the engines are shut down but you are getting all the engine data on these two pages they also have how much fuel you are carrying So as you can see here in this corner that is the total amount of fuel on the aircraft. So as always if you guys like the content please do subscribe to the channel drop in a thumbs up if you get to learn something new today and thank you so much for watching I really appreciate it. Now moving on to further down below into this area First of all you have these two white colored levers they are your thrust levers or throttles as Boeing calls them these are used to control the engine thrust so just like a car accelerator if you move the throttles forward the engines will spool up and produce more thrust if you bring the throttles backwards the engines will slow down on the sides these two wheels are your horizontal stabilizer trim wheels so they show you the current position of the horizontal stabilizer this lever here is for your flaps so you select flaps using this lever you move it backwards and as you can see here you have all the names for the different flap settings this lever here is for your speed brakes so when you pull this lever the speed brakes come up and they produce additional drag here you have the parking brake just like in your car you have that handbrake which you pull up or you have electronic handbrake as a button the 737 handbrake is here in the form of a switch it's not a switch actually it's more of a control which you move backwards down below here these two are your fuel cut off switches so when you move these up 
the engines start getting fuel. If you move these switches downwards to the cutoff position, the fuel supply to the engines is cut off. Moving down here, these three red switches are your fire warning switches. So whenever there's a fire on the engines or in the APU, we'll come to the APU a little later on, but whenever you have a fire on any of these three things, that will show up there in the form of red colored lights. Now fire on an airplane is a big thing, so obviously you also have extinguishers on the aircraft fire extinguishers so when you move these switches towards the right or the left you can rotate the switches left and right and when you do that the fire extinguishers will fire and they will try and douse out the fire okay coming further down this here is the center pedestal on which you have various panels now from the leftmost this panel is for your VHF communication so you can set your VHF radio frequencies here and so is this panel. So this is for VHF1, this panel is for VHF2. This is your radio tuning panel on which you can tune a VOR or a ILS frequency. This here is called the audio control panel and this can be used to control what you hear on your headset. You can adjust the volume, you can adjust ki tumhe kaun se radio se kya sunna hai. This panel is for your flight deck access door, this part. So once the cockpit door is closed, you can open the cockpit door by using this switch. Also, if you want to deny entry to someone, you can use this switch and the door will not open from outside. This here is your transponder panel on which we set our SCOC code and also our TCAS control panel. So you can control your TCAS, which is traffic collision avoidance system. You can control that from this panel. Down here, this panel here is for your cockpit door entry video. So outside the cockpit door in the galley, in the front galley, we have cameras installed. And you can see the feed, live feed coming from those cameras in the cockpit. The feed is usually shown to us on this lower display or you can have a dedicated display as well. That feed is controlled by using this panel. These are just to control the backlighting of the panel. Then moving on towards this side, this panel here is for your cargo fire. So in case you have a fire in any of the cargo compartments, the 737 has two cargo compartments, one is in the front and one is in the back. If you have a fire in those compartments, which is again a big thing, that will show up on this particular panel and you can then fire the extinguishers. They're not exactly extinguishers, they are fire depressants. In the sense, they will control the fire. Moving further down, this panel is for your weather radar. So this panel here is for your ADF. Moving further backwards, this is a CELCAL panel. CELCAL stands for selective calling. It's a method of individually calling all aircrafts. It's a detailed topic. Maybe I'll cover it in some other video. This is your VHF-3 radio. Moving backwards, we have the rudder trim indicator and this is used to control the rudder trim. The left side is for aileron trim. Towards the right hand side, we have the VHF-2 control panel, like I said. Moving behind, again, you have navigation aid tuning panel. This right hand side ACP or the audio control panel is for the first officer. Now this here, this big thing is the printer. The printer can be used to print out various things such as messages from the company, you can print out the weather, you can print out aircraft data as well. Now moving on to the left hand side of the cockpit, as you can see, this semicircular thing here is called the tiller. The tiller is used to taxi the aircraft or basically whenever you move this thing below or upwards, the aircraft nose wheel will turn left or right and you can maneuver the aircraft on the ground. This small panel that you see here is basically your oxygen mask. So the oxygen mask is inside this panel. So whenever you need supplementary oxygen, for example, if you have a decompression, we do not have drop down masks like the passengers. So we have to use this particular mask. So we take this mask out, put it on our nose, and then we have separate oxygen bottles. We do not use the same oxygen bottles as the passengers. There are separate bottles for the cockpit crew. And uh, these bottles last for much longer than the passenger oxygen. Uh, just to give you an idea, these bottles will last you about 100 to 110 minutes as compared to the passenger oxygen, which is for about 12 to 22 minutes on the 737. Moving further, this big thing here, this is the control column. The control column is used to control the aircraft in pitch and roll. So whenever you move the control column backwards, the elevators will go up and the aircraft will pitch up. When you push the control column forwards, the aircraft elevators will go down and the aircraft will pitch down. When you move the control column towards the left, the ailerons will go up and down and the aircraft starts to roll towards the left and vice versa for the right hand side. This big lever here is the landing gear lever. So when you move the lever down, the landing gear comes down. When you move the lever upwards, the landing gear retracts and goes back inside the aircraft. This small dial here is for your flap position indication. The switch on the left hand side of the dial 
is the auto brake selection. So the 737, like most modern airliners, has automatic braking. So after landing or in case of a rejected takeoff, you do not have to apply the brakes manually. Although you always can, but you don't have to apply the brakes manually. You can simply use this auto brake selection. You have various selections for different levels of braking. And when you land or if you have a rejected takeoff, the aircraft brakes will automatically apply and bring the aircraft to a complete stop. These two tiny little displays here are called standby displays or standby instruments. They are to be used when the primary instruments have failed. So you can refer to them as a backup indication. The upper one is known as the ISFT, Integrated Standby Flight Display. The bottom one is known as the RMI, a radio magnetic indicator. Now towards the bottom here are two pedals. They are not very clearly visible in this photo, but here one pedal is here and the other one is here behind the control column. Now these pedals are used to control the rudder. The lower part of these pedals, if you push that, you control the rudder. So you can move the pedals one by one like this. If you press the top of these pedals, you can then apply the brakes. So the bottom part is for the rudders, the top part of the pedals is for the brakes. Now as you can see, on the right hand side, all the controls are replicated. In the sense, the control column is exactly the same on the right hand side. So the first officer and the captain have exactly the same controls, except for one thing. There is no tiller on the right hand side. On the 737, the tiller for the first officer side or the right hand side is optional. So if you pay money for it, you can have a tiller installed on the right hand side. However, mostly on the 737, the captain does the taxi. So he will maneuver the aircraft on the ground. So most airlines do not opt for it and the right side will usually not have a tiller. Moving on to these two tiny screens or computers here. Now I'm sure you must have seen a lot of photos or a lot of pilots doing something, typing something on these computers. These are known as MCDUs, Mode Control Display Units. These are basically an interaction for the flight management computer. Now the flight management computer is a very important computer on the aircraft. It has all the navigation data and all the performance data for the aircraft. So all the speeds that we put in, all of our takeoff weights, our zero fuel weights, and all of our navigation data also, what route we are following, what airport we are landing at, what airport we are taking off from, all of that data is put into these two computers and that data is then shown on the displays to us. Now moving up to these three panels that we have here. So this center panel is for the autopilot controls. So whenever you want to engage the autopilot, you do it by pressing these two switches. Whenever you want the aircraft to operate according to your needs, for example, you want to change the heading or you want to change the altitude or the speed of the aircraft. All of that is done by using this panel here. So this window is for your speed. This window is for the heading and this window is for the altitude. These two outer panels are EFIS control panels. They are used to control different informations which can be shown on the screens that we discussed earlier. The primary flight display and the navigation display. On the left hand side of the EFIS control panel and on the right hand side you will find that you have three different switches. Now this is basically your warning system for the aircraft. This yellow one is called the master caution one or the red one is the fire warning switch. So whenever you have any fire, this red switch will light up or whenever you have any problem in the aircraft, which is not very major, it's not a fire or something major, but some system has failed, let's say. In that case, the orange button will light up telling the pilot that something is wrong with the aircraft. Now you also might be wondering what exactly is this big thing here. This is known as the heads up display. Now normally when you're flying visually, you're looking outside at the runway and all the visual features and then you look inside into the cockpit to check your speed, to check your thrust, to check your altitude and a lot of other things. This heads up display makes life a lot easier. It's like a projected display of the primary flight display. So all the primary flight display information is shown to you on the heads up display. So the pilot does not have to keep shuffling between looking outside the cockpit and looking inside the cockpit. You can just look at the heads up display, which is transparent, but you can see the information. So you just have to change the focus of your eyes so that you can see what is outside the cockpit. And you can also, if you change the focus, look at the heads up display and see the data there. Now moving to the overhead panel of the aircraft. On this overhead panel, all these individual panels are for one particular system. So before I tell you about all of these panels, you will notice that four panels are different colored. So you see this, this, this and this panel. They are all white colored while the rest are all gray. 
why exactly is that because these systems are critically affected in case of a engine failure we'll start off from the top left hand side this top panel is for the flight controls the bottom one is for the computer switching it's a little complicated but this is basically for switching between different computers this panel here is for your fuel this dial shows you the fuel temperature these switches are for the fuel pumps on the right hand side all of this panel is for the electricity on the aircraft so from the top this panel shows you the current voltage and the amperage of the different generators so the 737 has primarily three generators on board the aircraft one for each engine and one in the apu now the apu is a small jet engine which is placed towards the back of the aircraft that small jet engine is not used to produce thrust it's only used to produce electricity and air so the status of the electricity being produced by the apu can be shown on this panel moving below this small panel is for the standby power so in case the generators fail you want to disconnect the generators or you want to switch over to standby power you can do that from this particular panel moving further below you have controls for the different generators which generator do you want to be powering the aircraft can be controlled by using these switches these two switches here as you can see are labeled left and right wiper so just like a car airplanes also have wipers because when it rains it becomes really hard to see outside the cockpit moving further up on the center panel this is basically just to control your lighting this is for the equipment cooling moving further below this switch is used for the seat belts so whenever you have turbulence or for takeoff and landing the seat belts come on so we just toggle this switch on or off to control the seat belt signs in the cabin behind moving on towards the right hand side this top panel is for the window heating and the probe heating the probe heat is used to control the heating of the probes so the aircraft has a lot of probes outside which measure dynamic pressure static pressure temperature of the air outside all these probes when you enter a cloud or when you enter moisture might get iced up ice might build up on these probes and might block them so all of them are heated and the heating is controlled by using these switches moving further down you have engine anti ice and wing anti ice So just like the probes the engine and the wings can also accumulate ice. To prevent that from happening we have anti ice on the aircraft. So when you put these switches on hot air is thrown on the engine lips and on the wing leading edge. That hot air will melt the ice away and you have no more ice. Moving further down you have the hydraulic panel. So the aircraft has three hydraulic systems system A system B and a standby system these switches are used to control the hydraulic pumps for these individual systems down here we have a panel for the pressurization this panel shows you the cabin vertical speed so when the aircraft is climbing and reaching its cruising altitude the cabin behind does not climb at the same rate as the aircraft because obviously if the cabin is climbing at the same rate eventually the oxygen levels in the air would drop so we maintain a particular altitude in the cabin normally the maximum altitude that we maintain behind is about 8000 feet so that rate of climb for the cabin is indicated to us on one of these panels this is where we control the temperature in the cabin and the cockpit from this white panel here is for your bleed so the engines not only produce thrust on an aircraft they also provide us with electricity with the generator and they also provide us air that air is then cooled down and then sent to the cabin for cooling and for pressurization so the control for that air coming from the engine is done by using this particular panel this is your again a part of the pressurization panel so here we set our cruising altitude and our landing altitude these switches here on the left and on the right hand side they are for controlling the external lights on the aircraft in the center here you have a compass this is a standby compass so in case everything else fails on the aircraft you can use this compass to fly a particular heading moving towards the back side of the aircraft this is a particular seat where you can have a person sitting in the cockpit so if someone wants to travel in the cockpit they can sit on this seat as you can see it has absolutely no leg room because the 737 cockpit is very tiny like three people in the cockpit and you're stuffed there's not much space in the cockpit so as you can see this person would not have any leg room or he shouldn't have any legs here you have one more seat if you press this red switch this whole thing will drop down and you can have one more seat here so here you will have one more seat so basically you can carry 
four people in the cockpit at a particular time. This here is the fire extinguisher. So in case there's a fire in the cockpit, you can use this extinguisher to douse out the fire. These are the cockpit seats. They are not the most comfortable seats. The 737 has manual seats. So just like olden cars used to have manual seats, you basically pull a lever and then you push and pull forward and you adjust your seat. The 737 has similar seats. So you have levers there to control the seat height how forward and backward you are and also you can control some other things. So that was a quick cockpit tour of a Boeing 737. Now like I said if you guys want to see some other cockpits of some other airplane do let me know. I'll try and share with you guys all the information I have. I hope you learned something today. I hope you got to know that cockpit mein itne sare switches kya kaam karte hain. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.